Welcome to part two of this video where we're considering ways to use Finale as a teaching tool for teaching musical concepts. Um, that assignment that you just saw and heard is one that I'm developing especially for this video because I want to share with you the, the thought process that goes with developing one of these and be actually doing revisions as we talk because something will occur to me required to be to improve the assignment. The essence of it is that you need to match your students music and finale skills with the assignment and you have to have clear goals. Usually it's a good idea to not have too many learning goals unless it's a review assignment or the culmination of something that they've been building up to for a long time. I'm kind of thinking of this as a review assignment for students who had learned most of this stuff before but maybe were coming back from a break or hadn't, hadn't dealt with it for a while. So these are my goals that I'm trying to achieve with this assignment. And then that helps me figure out how to design the assignment. assignment. And then these are the finale skills that I've identified are going to be required to you know, be able to do the assignment without student having a lot of frustration or, and not being able to finish obstacles with their lack of finale knowledge. Now, teaching this level of finale knowledge probably is something um, that would take maybe a couple, like two or three smaller, very short assignments that would build up these skills, and maybe in class, or uh, little you know, assignments that would take them 10 or 15 minutes um, on their own. I down some ideas, uh, priorities, I think, that uh, are helpful to think about. So when you're using Vanali, uh, the template that you design is super important. The template, of course, is a document uh, that is curated in such a way it's edited so that only the most useful things for that particular assignment are present in the document and there aren't things you try to eliminate things that could distract the student or confuse them from just doing the musical goal that you're trying to get them to to work on as you develop templates you will probably want to keep certain things in every template because you're going to be using them a lot and here's a list of some that I, I try to include in all my templates um, because I use most or all of them every assignment. Uh, the next thing to think about is the clarity of goals and design it needs to be matched to your students' musical and finale skills. So you've got your musical goals in mind and you think about what how you could accomplish that with finale and then you determine whether the student has those skills or not and uh, you know what you might need to do to get them to that level. Um, so when you have the clear design uh, in mind, you try to keep the assignment focused, then you create a clear pathway in your template, removing things that are irrelevant or potentially obstacles, and then you try to have as clear uh, a layout, clear instructions, and clear expectations as possible. So um, we were looking at the answer key. This is, this is one possible solution for the assignment. Um, I'm what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of this as being a two-stage assignment. By the way, um, it could have been split up into like two or three assignments, but I'm doing it this way because I want them to be able to see it all right in front of them—the simple harmony contrasting with the more elaborate harmony. And um, if I split it up, that wouldn't be as clear. Although what I could do is hide the lower staves and have it just appear to be triads at first. So that would be another option. Anyway, what they would see would be something like this, uh, the blank version. Um, try to give instructions on the document because it makes you have to be concise because it's not very easy to put a lot of words in a finale document. Um, even though there's more, more than three steps to complete it, I tried to edit it down to, being, to appearing to be three steps so that it's not overwhelming in staves two and three, so I'm identifying exactly which staves to work in. Fill in the basic triadic harmony and corresponding chord symbols in, indicated by the Roman numerals, period. So that's their first thing that they have to do. First few chords are done for you. I'm reminding them that. And then I'm, I'm saying that they need to voice lead the chords. And then enter uh, the chord roots in the labeled base one stave. So again, I'm describing everything that's already there and then uh, as a starter, and then I said label each chord with its harmonic function, T for tonics, SD for subdominant, and D for dominant. So then that would be stage one, and 
at the end of stage one, I'd probably have a review, like feedback session, where they would show me their documents so far, and we would either exchange, uh, you know, uh, comments about it online, or we would work on it together in class. And they would, if there were mistakes, what's great is what you could then play for them and show them as they're seeing the visuals uh, mistakes. So, for example, uh, if if one of them did something like this. I would have trained them to listen to the uh, file, which you can do with a, sh a very useful shortcut with the playback window turned off. Um, you simply uh, select a measure and do spacebar click. Hopefully they would hear that that wasn't quite a straight triad. They would go back and maybe do what we call scrub playback shortcut, which is when you hold down option and spacebar, and it activates whatever sound is above the cursor. And then you can move at whatever speed you want through every sound. So then you can isolate the chord. Now, some of them might spot that and some of them might not, but uh, at least they have a ch more of a chance if, they, if they're not piano players or they don't have good ear training skills yet, and they would figure it out and, and, and notice that that's not a note in an F triad, and then hopefully correct it. Anyway, the point is, it's making use of Finale's ability to give some audio uh, oral feedback to what they write. Okay, so anyway, they've come to the end of stage one, they've finished their triads, they've gotten some feedback, they've gotten a chance to revise. Then we would go to phase two, which is um, here, and in stages four and five, fill out the elaborated harmony with these particular parameters and limitations and guidelines and then it tells them to mute staves two and three so they can hear staves four and five clearly and I would have showed them the shortcut to go to both the, the mixer tool so you can mute there and also the shortcut to go to studio view which is uh, appearing on your screen um, as command shift E and here you can also mute things and finally uh, we would get to the the final uh, revision stage would be to carefully check the work by playing it on piano and or using the scrub playback shortcut. So they would go through their file and, and either play it like this, and at any time they had a real problem, they would slowly go. And then when they heard an issue, they would go and figure out if there was a mistake. So that would be, uh, that would be the sort of sequence of events there. Okay, so now let's talk about the finale stuff going on behind the scenes here and what uh, manipulation you're doing to make the assignment successful for the students. Um, the first thing is that loading sounds, the sounds that you think are going to be most helpful for the assignment. So in this case, I used, um, I always try to use the Garrison sounds when I can because they tend to sound the best. And uh, you can see I preloaded them in. If you don't know how to do that, you can watch the previous video. The simple harmony ends and the extended ending with the sharp 4 minor 7 flat 5 continues on. So I have hidden the other staves just to make it clearer and um, cleaner looking so that there aren't a bunch of empty staves that are unnecessary. Also, if you leave empty staves that you want to remain empty, if you leave them visible, that's inviting um, possible confusion on the part of the students. But I've hidden them with a staff style, and the way that works is you use a um, the staff tool, which is triggered there, is access there. See this line appears, and that means that a staff style is currently applied to those staves, and the staff style that is applied is this one, force hide, staff, and collapse. And what that does is it makes the, the staff disappear from the page view. So if I go back to page view, you'll see that it's gone. But again, the reason we hid them was to make the whole thing cleaner and less confusing for the student. So whenever you do an assignment, often it will give you an idea for a follow-up assignment that can be built on top of it. So the obvious follow-up assignment to this would be for them to do a harmonic analysis of their uh, elaborated chords. And there's a built-in, in this template, there's a built-in harmonic analysis library in the, as expressions. If I double-click, they're there under Roman numerals. 
And what I've done to prepare this is I've, I've I used these little arrows to get the most commonly used ones up near the top. And I've also programmed them with meta tools um, to be easy for the students to find. And what I've done here is intuitive uh, shortcuts. The number one for one major seven, the number two for two minor seven, and so on. You do that by uh, choosing something that you want to program. Um, and if you see a little letter, that means it's already been programmed with a meta tool. So 5705 right now is programmed as T. Um, and so what that means is if I close this for a minute, and I, if I wanted, um, there isn't actually a 5705 here, but if there was, and I wanted it, I could hold down T and click and I would get 5705 very quickly. But what if I wanted to use T for something else? What I would do is do Shift T and it would open up and it would show me what is currently T and I might say I want this to be T. So I do Shift T there and now now 1 minor 7 has become T. Okay. But what I, so I programmed uh, seventh chords 1 through 7 with the numbers 1 through 7. If I needed to make one, I simply double click and I go in there and I can just duplicate one, like take one, I could duplicate it, edit, and then in the window, change it, go like that, and uh, assign it. So I also show the students how to do that, how to program their own. Another follow-up assignment I might do is have them render this in richer sounding audio and perhaps play live in accompaniment to it or sing it one of the best ways to do that is to export it via MIDI to a DAW, something like GarageBand. So let me quickly show you how to do that. Like this, you go to the File menu, you do Export, and you choose MIDI file. Uh, then you give it a name that you can find, a place that's easy for you to find it, and it will be exporting a MIDI file, in this case, to my desktop. Um, just click through these, except the default options, because you want to keep all the instruments as separate tracks. Then you simply, uh, there's now a MIDI file on my, on my desktop. So in GarageBand, for example, you choose a blank project, then drag your MIDI file in there. You'll probably get a notice like this, and you can say yes, import the tempo if you want it to be the same tempo. And then all the tracks appear. Uh, you can get rid of any tracks you're not using. And if you've uh, if your staves are clearly labeled, you can you know figure out where everything is. Now you'll notice that sometimes it assigns it just all to piano, even if it was drums. Sometimes it will assign it to piano. So you have to reorder the sounds. And now you have. And you could start doing things like doubling tracks and adding layers, and then adding live instruments and so on. like experiment with having a different sound in the melody, having a different, um, having the melody in a different octave, all kinds of stuff, and then adding, of course, live instruments and so on. So it's, uh, it's something to keep in mind as part of your, your thinking when you're thinking about a finale assignment. One of the advantages of it is it sort of will give them a head start on doing a sequenced version, maybe including some live instruments of the assignment.